Crim 2 Morning News begins now. Former Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz is hinting at a potential 2020 run this morning. We'll hear his thoughts in an exclusive interview with our sister station. A University of Idaho professor is now barred from the university. This morning, we look at whether she has a legal case on her hands. And we are celebrating National Wear Red Day today. Throw on your own shade of crimson to support the fight against heart disease. 5 a.m. now on our Friday morning. Welcome to Creme 2 Morning News. You made it to the end of the week. It may be payday Friday uh -huh. for some folks. It Thanks is for, for being us. with us. Yes, it <laughs> is. We love it. Thanks so much for being with us. I'm Jen York. And I'm Brittany Bailey. Also joining us this morning, our very own Evan Narani. We want to find out what our Friday forecast is going to shape up like. Those changes we've been talking about. Looks like they're almost here, Evan. And yeah, they're kind of just arriving. So what we're seeing on uh, satellite radar is a good amount of activity uh, that's starting over on the west side of the state. And it's not going to make its way to us until later on in the afternoon, if not the evening hours. So you can see right now cloud cover, the theme for the morning. But look at those showers over on the west side of the state. In fact, let me give you a little bit of a wider view where you can see that's where the majority of that activity is happening. As those showers push from the west side of the state over towards us, we're even seeing a couple of them up toward those northern mountains and valleys. Uh, we're going to see it come in the form of rain because temperatures are warmer. This doesn't last for long, though, because by the time we get to your Saturday and your Sunday, we're looking at a good chance of snow, Sunday especially. So temperatures right now in the 20s, 27 in Spokane, 24 in Coeur d'Alene. These are going to be what our afternoon high temperatures look like by the time we get to Monday. So that's important to keep in mind that we're taking uh, quite a dip in those temperatures by the time we get to about the middle of next week. 12 hour forecast is a good indicator of what the rest of the day is going to look like. So temperatures will make their way to just about 40 degrees, if not rest in the upper 30s and chance of precipitation increases pretty strongly by the time we get uh, from your afternoon into your evening. So we're at a 20% chance of showers at noon that jumps up to 70 by the time we get to 4 p.m., meaning that that evening commute has a good chance of rain in it. Uh, but snow is going to be only contained at those higher elevations. I'd say above about 3000 to 4000 feet. I'm going to toss things over to Amber Rustershawn. It's 501 now, about to be 502. She'll give us a check of that traffic. Good morning. Well, we're taking a look outside across the DOT cams right now. We can see clear conditions for drivers uh, across the board, and that's what we typically see for Friday morning commutes. So I don't expect any major slowdowns or congestion today, but in case that does happen, I will let you know. Brittany, Jen, I'll go ahead and send it back to you. Amber, thank you so much. 502 now and new this morning. U.S. Senator Cory Booker is running for president in 2020. He made that announcement on social media. A Booker is a Democratic senator from New Jersey. He previously served as mayor of Newark. Booker is the second black candidate to enter the race after Senator Kamala Harris. Former Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz is talking a lot lately about a possible run for president in 2020. And that is sparking a lot of controversy because he says he would run as a centrist independent. Democratic leaders are worried about that. They believe it would throw the election to President Trump. Our sister station in Seattle caught up with Schultz on his book tour. One polarizing topic discussed was the Second Amendment. This is how he answered a question about whether he would support stricter gun laws. What I support is the Second Amendment. I've got great respect for people who use guns for sports and for hunting. I think the question that we should be asking ourselves is, uh, in a society like ours, should there be weapons of war that is accessible to people to buy? And I think we got to take a very hard look at that. Now, another topic getting a lot of attention right now is border security, specifically building a wall. Now, here are his thoughts on that and about immigration. Well, having been in Arizona yesterday, which is a border state, I was very clear when I said uh, I agree with the Republicans that we need very strong, very stiff border security. And uh, sitting in Seattle with some of the best tech companies in the world, as well as some people that I know very well around the country, I am so confident that it's not a wall that we need or any kind of physical structure. What we need is leveraging technology which exists to prevent bad people from coming into this country. And on the topic of the Sonics, he says he regrets selling the team back in 2006. He said he thought the team would stay in Seattle. He gave an apology during that interview. 
If Schultz does decide to run for president, he could campaign against another Washingtonian, Governor Jay Inslee. Now, Inslee has not officially announced a run yet, but in an interview on Meet the Press, Inslee said he is opposed to Schultz running for president as an independent. There is no chance for Howard Schultz or anyone else for this matter to win an independent campaign for the presidency. All it can do is embolden Donald Trump. And if you want any proof of that, look at Donald Trump, who right. effectively has said he wants Howard Schultz to run. So this would be an enormous mistake, a blot on what otherwise has been a productive legacy for Howard Schultz, and he should not do it. Governor Inslee says he will make an announcement in a few weeks. We have an update this morning on the professor barred from the University of Idaho campus. A Moscow police report shows Denise Bennett was involved in a domestic dispute with her husband about her admitted drug use. Now, earlier this week, the university issued a campus wide alert telling students to call 911 if she was seen on campus. She was put on administrative leave because there had been reports she had used meth and had access to guns. That was true. She did admit that to police, according to a November police report. In that report, police say Bennett told officers she was trying to hide her husband's guns. She said it was an effort to hurt his feelings. She also told police she had done meth to try to get a reaction out of her husband. Police did not recover any meth in her belongings. We wanted to know if the university was opening itself up to any legal action by sending out that alert labeling her as a meth user. And if you actually believe it's true, whether or not it's def defamatory, you'd still be covered under a privilege, which we call a qualified privilege. Attorney Daniel Keyes and his colleagues say another legal issue could potentially be at play here. That one is related to whistleblower laws. Those laws protect people who report or expose wrongdoing at workplaces or organizations. Bennett's husband said her disagreement with administrators was in part because a gay student was being mistreated. He says if Bennett's administrative leave and the alert issued were related to that, it could be a problem. A U of I spokesman says Bennett's behavior, in addition to the November police report, raised concerns about campus safety. The spokesman said university leaders considered those details to be relative and urgent enough to share. Coming up on 507 now, two more law enforcement agencies will not enforce Initiative 1639. Both the Chelan County and Grays Harbor County sheriffs are standing up against that law. The initiative passed by voters in November raises the minimum age to buy a semi-automatic rifle to 21. In all, 10 Washington State County sheriffs have said they will not enforce that initiative. The Supreme Court is looking into a gun law. The justices agreed to review a New York City law that limits people from being able to transport guns outside of their homes. This is the first Second Amendment case for the court in nearly a decade, according to the New York Times. A ruling on the case could further solidify the court's stance on future Second Amendment cases. And if they don't have a wall, I don't even want to waste my time reading what they have because it's a waste of time. Well, that is what President Trump said about border negotiations with Democratic leaders. As you heard, the president says if there is no wall, there is no deal. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the wall funding is not happening. Democratic leaders proposed more than $21 billion for border security and immigration enforcement. It would pay for things including more customs officers and humanitarian aid. But President Trump is adamant that he wants a wall. He says he is still considering declaring a national emergency. Negotiators have two weeks to avoid a second government shutdown. Well, the harsh freezing weather is starting to ease up a bit after the polar vortex, but the Great Lakes and Northeast will still see cold weather today. And now forecasters are warning about the next problem, which is flooding. By Sunday, a thaw may be in full swing with temperatures in the 40s and 50s from Detroit to New York City. Well, you may have noticed that we are all wearing the same color today. That is because <laughs> we are celebrating National Wear Red Day. It is a day to show support in the fight against heart disease. Heart disease and stroke are the number one threat to women's health. The American Heart Association reports those diseases claim the life of one in three women, even when nearly 80% of those deaths could be prevented. 
So it's really important to raise awareness. Now you can do that by wearing red today. Also, make a personal goal of eating well and managing your blood pressure. You can also show support by donating to the American Heart Association. And in our next hour, Laura Papetti will join us to talk more about National Wear Red Day. She will talk about what we can do to support the fight against heart disease. And we do have a live look this morning at the Grand Hotel in downtown Spokane, lit up in red. Yeah, keep an eye out. We were talking this morning. There are going to be several landmarks mm -hmm. in downtown Spokane where you'll see the red showing this morning. All right, 509, almost 510 on this Friday. Well, the big game is this weekend. We'll have everything you need to know ahead of Super Bowl Sunday. And how much do you know about the teams playing in the Super Bowl? Get your phones or laptops ready because we will be testing your knowledge. I know a lot about them, Jen. The we most. will see. promise the most. <laughs> We're also talking about a return to that wet weather around the Northwest. That includes rain and snow as well. It's in the forecast next.